everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters, and I've got two exciting kits to share with you today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Border Models 35th scale Leningrad Tiger. Now, this represents a very, very early Tiger. In fact, if you look at it, the stowage bin is not on the back. They actually have the stowage bins on the side of the Tiger, and there's also some other variations on it as well. This is a kit that comes with a couple of figures, metal barrel, all kinds of other photo etch. Take a look inside that. But we also have the Border Models Jagdpanzer IV L48. This is also another brand new model that uh, Border just came out with. Best part of all, both of these kits are available right now. They are not something that's coming in the future or pre-order or anything like that. They're actually available right now. They're both on our website at andyshhq.com. And today what I thought I would do is just open them up, tear them apart, and let you see all the nice parts inside. So, let's get started. Okay, first up we have the Jagdpanzer IV L48 early from Border Models in 35th scale. Now the L48 refers to the size of the gun there. And later on in the war, the Jagdpanzer IV would be updated to an L70, which had a much longer barrel on it, a little bit more high velocity. But this is one of the very first uh, Jagdpanzer IVs to come out. And this is the way it was set up with the earlier L48 gun. Uh, this kit will have all kinds of extra bonuses. Of course, we're going to look inside it in a minute. It shows you some of the uh, photo etch parts that will be for the side skirts. Not quite sure why this one is laying partially on the ground, but uh, you get the idea. So let's take a look at the plastic inside. Here we are. We're to start off with our lower hull for the Panzer IV. As you can see as we look around here. One thing you're going to immediately notice with the, uh, the border model Panzer IV hull is that these louvers are already attached. Uh, kind of makes it a real high surface right here. Something you don't normally see on some of the other companies, but... Nice little bit of detail that you won't have to add later, and that way all of those are all lined up perfectly as well. So you can see all of the detail that Border has put into this lower hull. And now we have this sprue right here that has a bunch of different accessories on it, including the gun barrels. And to start off with, I'm going to show you this. So we have our regular L48 barrel here, but we also have a slide molded L48 barrel and if you can look real close if we can get the camera to focus and cooperate you can see the threading on it so you can do the type where the uh, the muzzle brake looks like was been uh, unscrewed also here is the muzzle brake it has been slide molded and it has a couple of different front ends that you can add to it so I'll just let you look over these pieces real fast Some nice looking detail in there. Next, we have our road wheel sprue. And it has a few other parts on there too. Like here is our slide molded suspension arms. Or assemblies, I should say, I guess, on that. Some of our road wheels, the idler wheel. Looks like some T-34 track. Some spare armor track. So this is obviously used from one of their previous Panzer IV kits, which makes sense because all of that did not change between, or a lot of it did not change between different Panzer IVs. And of course, you will get two sets of that in the kit. And next up, we have some accessories on here and lots of slide molding on the side here. This whole, this whole edge right here has all been slide molded. Let you look at those parts. Now we're going to take a look at the tracks. And tracks are nicely done here. You can see there's a natural sag already molded into the top of the tracks. So we have link. These are individual links right here. And these will go around the dry sprocket and idler. And then we have all the length of track, which accounts for this top portion right here. As you can see, we've got the nice sag in it. And then, of course, all the other uh, length of track for doing different areas of it. So, like, this will be the bottom of it. And then these are the parts that go up. So, it makes it a lot easier than putting it together a million little individual links. And we've got our uh, another set of dry sprockets and idlers and some different road wheels. 
right there. And of course, you're going to get two sprues of this particular one. Next up, we've got some accessory sprues, which are kind of interesting. So this is just going to be some extra parts. As you can see here, we've got like a rolled up tarp, some helmets, some boxes, just like a little accessories that you put around the vehicle. Uh, you are going to get two sprues of that. I'm, I'm assuming obviously this is all stuff you need for the actual build, but it's nice that they give you all these little accessories that you can place all over your vehicle. And this is looking like more of those little brackets. So I'm assuming these are the brackets for the, uh, the side skirts. And of course we've got all the little grab handles right here. And next up we have the upper hull and some of the parts that go along with that. So we have our side uh, fenders here. I'm just gonna let you get in there and take a look at the way this looks. There is your upper hull. Then we also have another just a random <laughs> collection of stuff here. So we've got some of the fender covers, some of the back pieces, some hatches, shovels, you name it. There's a little bit of everything on this particular sprue. A little bit of slide molding on the edge here. Just like that. And then we're going to get to the photo etch. So all of the photo etch side skirts are, excuse me, all of the side skirts are done in photo etch. So we have those right here. And then there's a little bonus inside this kit. So you have a Zimmerit tool that is included in photo etch. And then you have an A and B epoxy putty that is also included inside this kit, which acts as the, uh, the compound you mix together and you can make your Zimmerit for this kit because a lot of these Jagdpanzer IVs, uh, the early ones at least, had Zimmerit on them. So this is a bonus that is actually inside the kit. And one other piece too that was molded separately and it actually came in the, uh, the part with the, the lower hull and this is our mantlet here. Hopefully we can get you close enough that you can see the texture on this piece yeah there we go and finally we've got some decals some very basic decals but decals nonetheless and lastly i am going to show you the instructions here and uh what it's like to put this kit together Decent amount of plastic, but nothing that's going to take super long, I don't believe. There's a quick little history of the vehicle, a complete parts breakdown of everything that comes inside, and then a obviously a step-by-step -step in the instructions of how to put all of this together. Now, if you're interested in seeing any of these things a little bit longer, obviously you can hit pause on your machine that you're watching this on. Uh, other than that, I'm going to kind of just buzz through it pretty quickly. I've actually, I think I've built it. I know I've built at least two of the Panzer IVs from the border, and maybe even three, if I can remember back on it now. All of them went together really well, and I've got high hopes that this would go together equally as well as any of the other ones on there. And it's also nice, wow, that is the entire kit build right there, because we go right into the markings. I'm going to try not to blind you with that. So there's a couple of different markings in here uh, for you to do the paint job. But then, one more markings. There is a bunch of pages uh, that are going to show you how to use this epoxy putty. In fact, I was looking at the instructions a little while ago, and there's as much instructions on, on what to do with the epoxy putty as there actually is for building the kit. So they're going to give you a step-by-step -step breakdown, and it, it's a little weird the way it goes inside the instructions here, so we've got to kind of flip it back and forth. But they're going to show you step-by-step -step how to do the, the uh, Zimmerite on here, which is really cool. And then when you get to like the fenders, all of that. So lots of lots of breakdown on it. And then they're going to show you how you can take your epoxy putty and make some extra tarps for your for your vehicle. And yeah, like I said, a step by step. That's a nice little feature, I think. That especially they give you the stuff, and then 
actually show you what you're supposed to do with it. Because sometimes it's a little difficult if you haven't done any of that before. And I'm sorry about having to flip these back and forth. But that's how the instructions were printed. So not very good for YouTubing, but very good for the, uh, the consumer who wants to add some extra detail onto their model. So there, and wow, and a pink back of the uh, <laughs> instructions. Did not notice that until just now. So there you go, guys. There is a look at the Border Models 35th scale Jagdpanzer IV L48 early edition with the epoxy putty to make your own Zimmerit with. And now we are going to take a look at the Border Models new 35th scale Tiger One initial production. And the initial production one, this is going to be used around the Leningrad area in the winter of 42-43. Immediately, when you look at the box art, you're going to see some, some changes compared to what you normally would think of a Tiger, like the stowage bins on the side of the tank instead of on the back like you'd normally see. And there's going to be a few other things on there as well. But that's one of the, the most noticeable changes are where the stowage bins are going to be. Plus, also, Border is including two figures inside this kit. So they're up in the corner here. Of course, we're going to take a look at those as well. And those were done by Jason Studio. Uh, so you know there are going to be some nice looking figures on that. So this is also different too. This is actually showing a diorama of the kit uh, on the side of the box, the painted and display model. Something you don't normally see in a lot of uh, model kits, especially from Border. Let's take a look at the plastic now. Let's jump right in with the, the big giant main sprue in this kit. And you see we've got quite a bit of uh, parts on here. We have like the turret, the, uh, the turret top, the actual top of the hull, the sides, gun barrel, things like that. And I'm going to get in there really tight and show you all of this stuff now. So obviously here is our upper part of the hull. See the way they've molded that and of course the top of the turret as well now on this particular sprue you're going to immediately notice there's a lot of slide molding and we're going to go right over to that immediately so the gun barrel is slide molded some of these parts right in here are all slide molded as well as the bottom of the turret this whole thing is a slide here too so they can get all of the detail on the bottom of the turret itself and then we've got one of the mantlets in there too. And parts for like the, uh, the front, the glasses plate, things like that in the rear of the tank. So this is the biggest sprue in the entire kit. It's, it's pretty large size. In fact, it eats up a good portion of the entire box. And now we're gonna take a look at the tracks. The tracks are link individual little links right here and then a long length of track actually multiple long length of track and then individual guide horns too so the guide horns are here so to make a hollow horn which is the way these actually are they're actually hollowed out on the real vehicle uh, they had to mold those separately and then we'll flip these around too and let you see the bottom of the track so those should go together fairly easily and this is like a, a one-off on the tracks right here because also in the kit, there is a different set of track. And this is obviously gonna be for the, the newer, uh, or excuse me, the, the, more, the initial production of the Tiger because you're gonna get two of this particular sprue, as you can see right here. And this has those side stowage bins for the turret. Also a new uh, drive sprocket and then the tracks themselves. So we have link and link tracks again. And, oh, okay, I see. They have the guide horns molded in on that. Yeah, okay, so you do not have to attach the guide horns on this set of track, that's nice. And then also right here, we have slide molding for the tow cable ends so two sprues of that particular sprue next up we have some of the other parts for the like the top of the the tank and like the parts of the uh, final drive tow cables they're molded as uh, plastic some of the hinges hatches rear fenders part of the air cleaner system all of this stuff on the end all slide molded as you can see so all the Feifel air cleaners are all hollowed out there. Here are the shrouds for the exhaust. Did you 
just like that. So that is that sprue. Here is, now this is gonna be using part of, I should say, point out to part of the original Tiger kit that they came out with. So I think this is part of that kit uh, for the original Tiger one, because you're gonna need some of the parts on here. So you have the different turret top here. Here's the drum cupola, turret ring, some slide molding again, this is for the barrel, but I believe you're gonna use that other barrel and that other, other set of sprues there. So you'll have some extra. And also there is a yet another barrel actually right here too. Next up, we have our road wheels um, is the main thing I would see on this, this particular sprue. So we've got other drive sprockets, idler wheels, all the main road wheels, the torsion bar suspension. As you can see right here, all of those, there's the, the torsion bars. all of the other little accessories. So back here we have the radiators and part of the FIFL air cleaners. Those are all hollowed out as well there. And of course, because this is road wheels, torsion bars, suspension, all that kind of stuff, there are two of those particular sprues inside the kit. Next up, we're gonna look at the hull. And here is the Tiger hull. Lots of nice detail molded into it here. Here are the uh, parts of what would be the torsion bar. So the torsion bar will slide through and made up to the other side in there. So possibly the torsion bars might actually work on this kit. So we'll see. We'll have to look at the instructions and see what they call out on that. Also, there are two of these little caps here. These are the, the parts that go over the exhaust. They were molded separately and come loose like this, but uh, you can see they've got nice uh, cast texture to them, just like you'd expect on that. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the two figures that come inside here. So here we have our uh, tank commander in winter uniform, of course, because it's the Leningrad area in winter of 42. Here is the face on that figure. Nice deep cuts on the plastic. Very nice looking, I think. Especially in 30 second scale. And then we're also going to get a soldier in here too, also in winter gear. There's his face. Just like that. And both those figures are included inside this kit. And now I'm gonna show you all of the photo etch, metal parts, and the instructions. Okay, here is the accessory pack and some of the bonus stuff that comes inside. So even though they give you a nice slide molded barrel, you will also get a turned aluminum barrel. I love that. We get our one piece of cable here for the tow cable. We also get, of course, our photo etch for the uh, screens. A few other little parts there. And I guess they put the clear parts in here. So here is the vision ports for the cupola and some of the other vision ports on there too. So all of that is done up in nice crystal clear plastic. And finally, get a few markings. So you get the, looks like three different markings the national insignia there, and then the white elephant symbol there. So all of that is the accessory parts. And then now we can actually take a look at the instructions. And there's a little close up better of what the two figure poses are gonna be. And then now I'm just going to not talk as much and let you look at how the kit will go together. See if it's something you wanna tackle. And of course, if any of these pictures you want to look a little longer at, you can always hit pause or stop on your player. And 
And that's it, 25 easy steps. You can see they give you the turret bins for multiple different types of setup. And then we go right into the two different marking, or two of the, of the three different markings. So let's see, we have this one here. This is September of 42. This is February of 43. And this is uh, Heavy Tank Battalion 503. This is Heavy Tank Battalion 502. And, oh, actually, I guess there's four in here. This is the Leningrad Tiger that you see on the cover art. So Heavy, heavy Tank Battalion 502 in September of 42. And finally, 502 again, also in Leningrad. So... So there you go, guys. There is a look at the two tight, or excuse me, at the new Tiger One initial production, Leningrad region. Uh, remember, this kit is available right now. It's on our website. It's available for shipping immediately. If you order one up, it'll go out right away on it. So uh, it looks like to be a pretty nice kit, especially if you're doing an early war uh, Tiger One. I think this would be a nice option for you there. Well, there you go, guys. What would you think? I think they're both pretty cool-looking kits here, especially with the extras that Border always adds inside each one of their kits. So, like I said earlier, both of these kits are available right now. You can pick them up on our website at andyshhq.com. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you, as always, for watching, and please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.